organisations. I'm based in the UK um, and I've represented them for a couple of years. I'm going to talk you through why they're different um, and um, I'll take all your questions by email um, at the end of the session. Um, so quickly running through um, the ge geography of northern Kenya, obviously like, like it is up in the north, um, not far from or bordering Lewa and, and bordering Samburu. So looking up at the map up here, you can see where we are just dotted around here. Um, in terms of um, other properties in Lycipia, we are at the highest point. You can see where we're circled up here. It's the highest point of Lycipia. And so you come in to Nainuki, which is down at the bottom of the map here. And you'll see to the right, you'll see Burana and Lewa, which is about a three-hour drive to the right. That little cluster on the top left there is Loisaba, Olmalo, and Sabuk. And that's about an hour and a half away. So as you can see, Olentili is really tucked up on its own, um, and you have spectacular um, views from up here. Super easy access. Um, we talked about the drive from Nanyuki, which is how most guests come into the property on scheduled flights. Um, and generally, people do like Ipia and then, and then the Mara because of the flight access. So um, coming into Nanyuki, we're quite an easy two-hour drive. Um, if, you fly, if you fly into Loisaba, it's about an hour drive. Um, the, um, but there's different soil types up there, so most of the time we recommend uh, Nanyuki. For charters, um, we have a private airstrip which is about 10, 15 minutes away from the property. Um, and if, you, if guests do come in by car, it's a good sort of five, six hour drive from Nairobi. And there's plenty of space up here for guests that are arriving by helicopter and for that really wow, incredible experience in terms of arriving. I want to talk you through quickly Lycipia and what it's about. Um, it really offers diversity. Um, you've got incredible and varied game viewing experiences, but you've got real culture and you've got a real variety of activities up here. Um, it's a really special protected part of Kenya um, that's been protected and, and um, looking at the, the success story of Lycipia. It's got a very um, special story looking at the responsible tourism story of what Lycipia stands for and how it's been created. Really around here, you've got real space, you've got isolation, you're really off the beaten track. Um, importantly, it's a year-round great part of Kenya to visit. The landscape up here is absolutely spectacular. Um, it's really special, very dramatic views. Um, over the years, all of this land has changed from farming land to wildlife sanctuaries. So it's got a very interesting, responsible um, safari story, and it's a, as, as a key safari, a responsible safari destination. You've got a very special um, experience to get close to Samburu and Maasai culture um, up in the north of Kenya up here. And you've got very few tourists, so you have a very special and quite private experience if you go to the right properties. Um, it's a very easy combination with the Mara, um, and it's a, such a great com combination combining Lycipia with the Mara. I want to quickly talk you through the story of the owners, <clears throat> John and Jill. Um, they're English and they're expats. They work for corporate companies, and basically they had um, they wanted to create a conservation area, and they wanted to create a lodge. And they went travelling all over Kenya, um, looking for um, all over Africa, looking for the ideal place. Fell in love with Kenya, and particularly this part of northern Kenya, um, and they wanted to, from the start, set out to give back to the community. Um, and they started off with a private conservation of 5,000 acres. It's now 40,000 acres. Um, and basically, they donated the lodge to the community when they opened. Um, this is what is fundamentally very different to Olentili, to the other properties. Um, and it's got a very interesting story that I'm going to talk you through. So it opened in 2007. Um, John and Jill donated it to the community. Um, they live on the property. They manage the property. And wildlife quickly came back to traditional grazing land. This is a great example of how private partnerships work with the community. Um, and importantly, this is all about giving back. This is the real f core focus of what Olentili is all about. They've raised their $5 million, which has been invested into water, into education, medical care, and hospitals. Um, so this is really tourism showing firsthand and giving back. I always say, what is Olentili? Because it's a, it's a very special education experience. Um, coming to stay at this property makes you think about conservation. It makes you think about um, the private partnerships with the community. Um, and it really makes you think, leaving this property, what an incredible journey John and Jill have been on and how they've created this. To put this into context, um, this is a private conservation area, which is 40,000 acres. That's about three and a half times the size of Manhattan that you've got all to yourself. So you never see another car from start to finish. You've got complete privacy. You have a really special experience, private experience up here. 
in all of that enormous space, you only got four villas. Um, so they're either one, two, or three bedrooms. They're all totally different. So the whole property, when it's full, sleeps 14 people. Um, importantly, this is so much more than game drives. Why is it different? I put this in because I'm often asked this. Um, I talked about them, John and Jill, donating it to the community. It's community-owned, so a very different um, conservation focus and a different, different setup um, to other properties. Um, this is all about the conservation and giving back to the community. Importantly, this um, conservation area is unfenced, so this is all about free animal movement. Lots of properties in RKP are fenced, and this is quite different in terms of um, the free animal movement. Importantly, I would say that this is a holiday. It sounds very basic, but we know that safaris are tiring. So you arrive here exhausted, and, and you very much leave refreshed with the whole format of what they offer. It's an all villa experience. You have a very private start and um, private experience from start to finish. And imagine you're in a private conservation area with a private villa with private activities. You've really got something very different as a selling model here. This is um, the views from Olentili, which are spectacular. You're looking um, down over rolling hills towards Lycopia Plateau, towards the Matthews, towards Zamburu. Um, you have rolling hills in every single direction. Lots of people tell me that this property has the, the best views in either Kenya or East Africa. It's very special. It's really humbling up here. You're on top of the world. It's very tranquil. It's very peaceful. Um, looking out at all times to views like this, just really and watching the sunrise really takes your breath away. And I was up here um, a couple of weeks ago, and it's so green like it is in this photo, and the landscape changes dramatically twice a year. So northern Kenya, as you know, is very dry and arid. After the rains, so November and December and in May, it's very green and lush. So I think they're fantastic times to come because they completely transform and change the area. Um, this is um, all about cultural experiences and learning how, this is Timothy, the head guide, learning how he's got and moved from cattle farming to um, being a conservation ambassador and learning about sort of how people like John and Jill are working with the community to really change the landscape and to long-term protect it. It's a really interesting story that's very integral to your part of your stay here. Um, the... Um, the um, wildlife up here, of course there is wildlife. I don't sell this lodge just on, on key wildlife viewing. You're coming here for other activities as well. Um, up at the moment, I saw lots of elephant up here um, a couple of weeks ago. We were lucky and saw wild, wild dog, and we saw a leopard as well. And generally, um, all the plains game is here, but you're not coming here just to tick off the animals because there's lots more to do. So think differently. So probably um, you're not going to get in a car here because um, most guests combine like Ipia with Amara. So unless you want to get in your car and do a game drive, um, you will do other activities. So what we're going to do is get, on, get, get close to wildlife on foot. So this is looking at things from a different perspective. This is really sort of like a slow safari. Get out there, look at things from a different viewpoint and vista. This is incredible sundowners and, and viewpoints to really embrace these, inter these incredible landscapes. Um, this is in this part of Kenya. This is only in northern Kenya. Can you do um, camel safaris? These are amazing. Um, the warriors take you off into the middle of nowhere, and you're generally doing sort of like a 90-minute um, safari going off into the middle of nowhere. And it's really special having your um, you finish off with your um, breakfast or sort of lunch down by the river, um, and just watching things from a different perspective and communities, wildlife, all sorts of things. Just thinking, wow, this, what a different experience that is. Um, you might go cycling as an activity, which is really interesting. Um, yeah, you might go horse riding. Jill has, they have two horses up here. We don't hugely push riding because you need to be got the two horses, um, but you can do it if one of you wants to go on your own. Um, all of your activities are private, importantly. So you have a private villa and you have private activities. So you're coming up here and you're enjoying incredible sundowners. A new activity that we've just launched, Jill's just done a yoga course, um, and you do incredible yoga sessions. I, I'm, I tried this when I was up here a couple of weeks ago. Really special and quite liberating. Starting the day to a really special yoga session, which really sets you up for everything. One thing that you're going to probably do is take the quad bikes down to the local village. Um, so technology meets tradition. Um, it's really interesting that you are a friend of Olentili. Um, you, this is not a tourist experience. Um, you're, um, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a normal working village. Um, you might get the welcome dance, and you'll be dancing with the warriors. Um, the, on the conservation area, there are three sets of singing wells. So in dry season, you might go off to see the singing wells. 
Um, and once a week, there's a vegetable and livestock market. So you go to the market if you went on the relevant day and wanted to go. You're the only tourist there as well. So a really special um, way to see local life and from a very different perspective. This is wonderful private sundowners. This is lovely private dinners, um, sort of on top of the world up here. Even the bush dinners are private. So this lodge has really gone to town with a privacy basis in terms of um, exclusivity and in terms of privacy. This is the pool. This is all backed up by a spectacular property. So um, really dotted on top of the um, landscape um, is this beautiful um, pool vista looking down over a waterhole. Um, it's beautifully designed. It's very relaxed. It's very informal. Um, this has got a really lovely feel, this property. It's not stuffy. It's very relaxed. Um, you're going to have to sit and relax in these lovely little cabanas and sort of enjoy the views and just enjoy and, and take some downtime probably after a nice lunch um, to relax and take it easy. Um, this is where you'll have lunch. And you're looking down on the deck here over the waterhole and I'm sitting up here listening to all the elephants down the waterhole and things. Really special with that view, thinking, wow, you're really sort of on top of the world up here. The library is very much a focal point of the property, um, and in here you'll probably have a pre-dinner drink, um, and you might have a dinner up here. Um, all of your meals are private, which is very nice, um, and you'll probably have a dinner with John and Jill in here, possibly one night, and how they say things is that if you'd like to have a dinner with us, you're very welcome to, but they don't, they're not offended if um, guests don't um, have a dinner with them, but um, most people then get the whole story about conservation, get the whole story about what they've done, and it really makes you think and understand that what they've done here is incredibly special, and it's quite, I think it's very moving. Um, on top of the um, libraries is wonderful deck area where you might have your pre-dinner drinks or you might have a dinner up here as well. The views up here are spectacular. The property or the four villas are totally different, and, and there's a lot of flexibility selling this property. So um, there are two one-bedroom villas, one two-bed and one three-bed. Um, so it's very small and it's very individual. Each one is totally different. This is called the Eyrie. Um, this is a bit different because it's a round bedroom and a round bed. So some people say this is African retro, this is a bit Austin Powers. This is all about these incredible views. Um, you go down your steps into your lovely um, outside bathroom, um, which is your lovely sunken bath, um, watching eagles and things flying above you. You will go across your lounge, I'm sorry, across your bedroom into your lounge, um, and then you go across another courtyard into your dining area. So each villa has its own butler. Um, you have incredible meals. You eat in different positions, and they're all private. Now, the best thing I mentioned at the start, this is a holiday. And this is a holiday because they say to you, what time would you like to have your um, breakfast? Um, it's 8.30, 9 o'clock. That means you have a lovely, you've had a proper night's sleep, so that's brilliant. You then have a private breakfast here in your pyjamas, relaxing, watching the world um, start and the day start, and then you go off and do the private activity of your choice. So it's a really lovely start to the day and a really special way to sort of... Um, to relax and, and get ready before your sort of crazy adventures in the Mara that you're probably going to, where you'll be doing obviously lots of game driving. So this is why the combination is so good. This is the Sultan's house. This is where I stayed a couple of weeks ago. Um, this is absolutely enormous. I must say all of the villas are huge. Um, this um, villa has a very different style. It's very Swahili. It's lots of wood. Um, so this is just the bedroom area. Going across the bedroom is your dressing area. And down to an enormous bathroom in this lovely jade green huge bath. Um, and then there's a um, sunken lounge coming off the bedroom. So that's all your bedroom area. Across your courtyard is your main lounge um, and your um, dining area. And in here, you'll have, um, you'll have dinners. Um, you'll generally eat in a different place if you want to. But you've got a butler and you've got a housekeeper per villa. So they'll really look after you, make sure that you've got everything that you need and you have your lovely relaxed starts to the day and it's very much home from home in terms of really sort of feeling very relaxed here, feel very, very at ease. Um, it's got a lovely atmosphere, the whole property, and it's all very, very relaxing. This is the chief's house. This is a three-bedroomed um, villa. You can see here, these are just the separate bedrooms, so this is how much space you get on Lentilly. So um, you'll see the style of the villas are all very different. This one is great for a group of friends or a great for a family. Um, multi-generations. 
you've got a lot of space inside, and you've got a lot of space outside. You'll see from the style as well, each villa is very differently styled, um, and they've all got um, a very relaxed um, vibe and a very relaxed feel. This is coming over to the Colonel's house. This is a two-bedroom one, and this um, looks um, this looks like a normal villa setup. So this is two bedrooms upstairs um, and two bathrooms and a lounge and dining room downstairs. They have these huge wraparound terraces. Um, you'll see it coming off the bedroom here, so looking on top of the world up here. Um, lovely, great big lounge. This is all very much sort of like woods. This is like um, very, I say, sort of like old school. It's got a very sort of like you step back in time here with maps on the wall, that sort of stuff. Wonderful food again from start to finish. One of the best things about Olentil is a wonderful spa. So all of your spa treatments are included, and they're unlimited. So what's really special here is that every day you might decide to have another facial or another massage. And actually, this format, and I mentioned sort of it's a holiday, this makes you feel relaxed. You arrive at the property very tired. You leave here completely recharged, and you feel completely ready for your next adventures, and whether this is the start to your holiday or the end of your holiday. Um, the property is um, very well priced. Um, normally, if we sit down face to face, I say, "How much do you normally think this is?" And people all say, "Over a thousand dollars per person per night." But the rates are incredible value, um, and we're from five hundred to seven seventy dollars per person per night. So all of your um, activities are private, and it, they're all they're all included, and this is all inclusive. This is a great option for honeymoons. This is a great option for families, and um, the. Children proposition is a very good one in terms of the, you have your own bedroom and bathroom as a child and you only pay 50% of the adult rates. So you get an enormous amount of space. And Olentilly is open year round um, and there are no age limits anywhere. And um, we have a, I always sell like this, we have a four for three offer. Um, and basically a four nights is from $1,500 per person and for a four night stay up to $2,310 per person for a four night stay. So incredible value for night stays that combine so well with other parts of northern Kenya, with the Mara. Um, you've got a really off-the-beaten-track experience that's very easy to get to, that's incredibly good value. That's a holiday that gives you lots of privacy and lots of exclusivity. And we do a lot of exclusive use. And this property lends itself very well for groups of friends, multi-generations. Um, that is the... Um, exclusive use rate for the seven rooms across the four villas. So you can see from $321 per person per night and um, for um, exclusive use. So really, really good value and giving you lots of privacy and lots of exclusivity. We do have um, some last minute Christmas availability. Um, so there's no Christmas supplements. So um, if you do have any Christmas last minute inquiries, please shout and we're here to help you. Um, Hopefully that's given you a good overview and explains hopefully why Olentilly is different, how it's different, um, it's, its conservation angle, its, its responsible tourism angle, uh, its privacy, its, its exclusivity, its different format. Um, it's a very special property um, that's very well priced and has got a very individual and very different story behind it. Um, these are my contact details. Um, please have a look at the Olentilly website which is there um, and we can send rates and information to all of you. But I'll be taking questions on email and afterwards, so I'll send you the presentation. Um, and I hope that's been useful. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.